Hello everybody, my name is Roman and it's Marks in Watch House and welcome back on GA4 BigQuery series where we try to make any sense from the data that Google Ads sends to us. So we did quite some work already and we already have the events data mart. And if you missed previous videos, you should go there and I explain everything in detail, including unnesting and working with the date period times. So what I found out, so I took some time uh, in the night and I tried to schedule the query and I understood that I have a mistake and the mistake is probably pretty simple is that uh, here I used to have order by event date, which is absolutely perfect for debugging purposes. But if you're planning to schedule it and then you're going to use this event date as a partition field to reduce your uh, cost on this, on the querying this. So let me just show it to you. You push scheduled query, create new scheduled query. And when you fill everything in the very bottom, you have destination table partition field. I do event date here, sorry I'm in Kyrillic, um, underscore, that will put every date in a separate bucket and whenever you query it, if you don't need to, to query all the data you have, you will significantly reduce the amount of data you're going to query each time and that will reduce your cost. But you're not allowed to have the destination table partition field uh, and order by it because it's going to be kind of taking away from the table. So this is one of the mistakes. The second problem I found out is that UTM term is not populated across all events. It only exists on certain events and I need to put it in the whole session. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the same window definition we used before. Again, there are different ways of doing this. This is just simpler and easier and I will also remind you again that a uh, window definition function takes more processing time and is more complicated. So whenever you have extremely huge tables, it might not be able uh, available for you to work with. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to say if it's going to be term, then I take not int value, but string value. And then I'm going to call it UTM term. Okay, and now here, instead of, uh, I'll go, I already removed this part, we used to have UTM term here, ah, here it is, sorry. So instead of having this, I just say UTM term as UTM term. And that should solve my problem with UTM term. Modify existing, uh, sorry, I, I think I need to do, sorry, do this, compose new query. And uh, because I'm, I'm, I'm modifying the scheduled query, this is why this question is asked. And yeah, here it is. Here I have it. So now UTM term is actually uh, exists on every table. And you see here the organic from Google has not provided UTM term, but referral has now because it's not relevant for this kind of traffic. So you might also want to have some if case if it's now to fill it with something else. But I'm absolutely perfect with what we have so far. And what else we have, we actually can schedule it right like this right now, uh, and put in our table, what else we can do is create the session data mart. And this is what I'm going to do. Um, so usually, I would put this, this stuff, and I will schedule it and we'll, we'll call it something like events, uh, website events. And then on top of that, I will build a session. But just for simplicity, I'm just going to have another sub query here to, to work with this. So let's have sessions. And it's actually like the most complicated part is already done. So all we need to do is we need to, to select all these fields. Um, actually, it's going to be um, session level data mart. It means that we're going to have GA session ID because this is the most important part. But everything else is just going to be minimized and maximized because everything else is just literally event level data. So what we can do here was I can have user pseudo ID, something uh, event data we want to take as minimum because event will happen. Uh, event can go through the midnight or through yeah, basically through the midnight with not uh, with session not be restarted, refreshed. And in that case, you will have two sessions with the same ID for two days. So to solve this, we need to do minimum event date as event date and event timestamp is something we don't need because we move on the top level. J session ID we already have 
user first touch timestamp this can be maxed or minimum it doesn't matter because it's basically going to be the same thing but let's just have it minimum then event name is also going to go away um, this one we also put it here and all this stuff it should be also on a level on a session level already so we just put it here and yep I think this should be that should be all. Let's now do group by group by one two order by uh, this by the way should be um, uh, visit day date or just date let's just call it date um, order by date descending and then G session ID sessions we go sorry it's, it's the first video in the morning so it, 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 I'm a bit uh, sleepy so here it should be select uh, let's intend everything and then here it should be sessions and then nothing so let's check we have first two everything else is aggregated we don't have from from events it should be underscore events right uh, event event aggregated so from event aggregated and if you run that should be our session level database and it actually is right yeah j session id user id date when it was the first touch channel utm source and everything else and that's all people that actually came to our website. And this, 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 this SQL code is pretty much universal. So what you might want to have on top of this is conversions, site, website visits, uh, I don't know, like uh, some uh, URL visits or whatever else you might have there. I'm not gonna go into details because I don't have yet any conversions on my website. I will, I will, I will work on this. I promise, and I will bring something to the tutorial. But in pretty much, it's gonna be exactly the same thing. So whenever you're gonna have a conversion, you won't gonna have event, and this event is gonna have a name. And if you have an event with a name, all you do is just put it here and say, okay, um, let's say my event key is gonna be conversion checkout whatever that can be then it may be integer parameter it can be string parameter depending on what you have or it can be just one and then it's going to be number of conversions and then we can also say if null so if we don't have any we just fill it with zero and this will work with any event you might have. You might have login event, logout, change password event, terms of condition, uh, sign up, um, I don't know, web app download. Whatever event you might have in your app, you just put it like this and it's gonna work and it's gonna work for the session level. So all you need to do is just say uh, that you need to spell it correctly and then go to your session level and say, okay, now we need to sum all number of conversions as um, number of conversions and that's basically it another thing you might want to have for example this is a very popular one uh, if you want to have a conversion of somebody visiting some specific specific page but you don't have this event yet and this is I'm going to show you in the next video so ask your questions below don't forget to sign up uh, don't forget to push like and if you have anything specific you want to ask just write me on LinkedIn and we will talk there thank you